You know, sometimes you just got to take a break from the hustle and bustle of life. You got to get away from it all. Just escape the noise, escape the chaos, find some peace, find some quiet. And oftentimes you just got to roll your sleeves up and get dirty and put in an honest day's work. Recently relocated from the city out here to the small town of no man's land as people have coined it we've set out on an adventure to find some farmland and try our luck at making a living an honest day's living by becoming a farmer welcome everyone to misled farms and this is going to be the very beginning of a brand new series to the channel where we take over and slowly build our farming, I guess you could say, empire on no man's land. A map created by Alien Jim. You can find it on the Farming Simulator Mod Hub. I will drop a link to the Mod Hub down in the description of all of my Farming Sim episodes. And eventually I'll do a walkthrough of some of the mods that I have installed. I'm not going to go through every single one of them because I do have quite a few installed. I actually need to go through and clean some of them out. So we have moved in to no man's land. We came out here in search of our own area that we could call our own and start our farming career. After much searching around and finding that the areas around here are just completely desolate, the land is just, it's completely wide open, totally available. Nobody lives here. But that's about to change because we are going to draw in new businesses. We are going to draw in new communities. We are going to build out this map. We're going to make people want to be a part of No Man's Land. We're probably going to eventually end up changing the name of No Man's Land to create our own little fictional town. This is going to be a role play series here on the channel. So we are going to do our best to uh, get ourselves immersed into the role play that is going to be this map. So to kick everything off, we came out here in search of some land that we could purchase. And what we found, we did not expect to find. Welcome to our new home where we are going to get started. We do have our truck over there. We have a little bit of a hay shed here. We have a silo system. We have a water point where we can collect up some water for future use. We even have ourselves a small little uh, vehicle workshop where we can tinker around with some of the stuff that we have. But the high point of what we have here is this area that we are to call home. Now it does need some TLC. Some of the, uh, the, the roof isn't looking too good here on the house. The house itself is looking a little rough. Uh, we basically scrounged up and found whatever we could, and some of the things were left behind by the uh, previous owner of the land. He did say that no one has been here for quite a while. Um, he, he comes from a long line of lineage of farmers in his family, and this was handed down from generation to generation. And eventually, when the uh, economy started to kind of collapse here at No Man's Land, uh, the family just kind of let the farm go. And they, uh, they weren't making very good use of it. You can see they've got a old small plot of uh, potatoes here that have completely withered away. So that's going to need some work. But the nice thing about it was we also fell in on all of their equipment. We were able to work a deal with the previous owner and get all of this stuff included in the deal. Uh, we went ahead and we took a loan uh, to purchase the property here. Uh, $250,000 was the amount that we paid for all of this. And this includes the whole entire area here. Parcel 26 uh, is what we purchased. So we have access to the small field here, which is good. We have a lot of land, a lot of different things that we can do here when we're getting started. Now, I don't know much about farming, but we're going to learn through trial and error as we go along here in this role play series. Looks like I have a decent uh, Massey Ferguson here. Yeah, it's pretty nice looking. I like that. Uh, looks like we have a weight. Uh, I'm assuming the weight goes on the tractor. It looks like I already have one installed, but it's always good to have a spare around. Uh, I have a cedar. That's looking a little rough. But uh, hey, it's, it's going to do the job for us here as we get started. 
They have a nice combine harvester here. That's incredible. I'm so happy that we have that because I know that we're eventually uh, we're going to need it. I have a trailer so that way when we harvest our fields, we got something to tip our uh, all of our grain into and take and put into our silo system. And we have ourselves a plow here as well so we can begin working our potato field and change this up a little bit. Man, I am very excited to get started uh, and test my hand at uh, being a successful farmer here. There's so much around. Our silo system completely empty. They didn't leave us anything behind in the silo system, of course. So we're going to be on our own there. Now, we do have $10,000 left over in our pocket after everything is all said and done. But that's not going to get us very far uh, right now. So we're going to need to come up with some ways here to start making a little bit of money and take a look at what we can do. I'm really, uh, I want to stay away from taking any more money from the bank because I don't want to go further in debt. So that's going to be something uh, that we're going to have to pay attention to as well. Speaking of the loan, now let's explain how this is going to work. So this is actually a mod where we can get a little bit more creative with the loan that we have taken. Now, I will say this, the loan amount does say $160,000, um, but as you can see, our monthly repayment is going to be $29.53, which is different from the built-in banking system that the game comes with. If we were to have taken a $250,000 loan from the banking system that's built right into the game, this page here that you see is not a mod. So despite the fact that we do already have some transactions, this is me getting the role play series set up. You can see here, I cannot borrow any money from the built-in banking system that comes stock with the game. The big difference here is if we were to take a loan through the built-in uh, banking system, we would not really have a monthly repayment amount. Each month that we progress in the game, we would only be charged interest and it would not take away from the overall balance of the loan. With this mod here for like the advanced banking, we actually have a monthly repayment that will be deducted out of our bank account every month and will eventually pay off this 160000 Now, we may do a special redemption, uh, assuming that we get enough money at some point and just pay off the rest of the loan early. We've taken a five-year loan, which I know is a little unorthodox when it comes uh, to terms with like mortgages and stuff like that, but to keep it to where we're going to feel the effect of the money being taken out of our account each month, I wanted to have a higher monthly repayment so that it simulates a little bit more of like that need to be productive every month, make as much money as we possibly can in order to pay this loan off. Now, the rules for taking loans is we can only take a loan once we have paid off a previous loan. So if we find ourselves in a situation where we need more money, this loan has to be paid off before we can take a new loan. Now, when it comes to vehicles, leasing is fair game for when we get into uh, things that we need. Also, we are going to try our best to utilize the used vehicle sales page as well. Right now, currently, there's nothing really on this page that we necessarily need uh, this early on in the game. But again, we will be able to lease certain pieces of equipment, assuming that we can afford it. And then we are, when it comes time to purchase equipment, again, we're either going to look at the used uh, vehicle sale page or we're just going to purchase directly from the store's main page. But we're not going to buy senseless stuff. If we can lease it and get the work done, that's going to be more financially uh, beneficial for us because the big thing with purchasing equipment is we want to make sure that we're going to be able to make the money back to pay for the equipment and then also have money left over to put into our pocket. Now for this series here, um, eventually what we are going to start doing is placing down production points, sell points. We're going to build small communities on the map and we're going to bring life back to this, to this area here. So 
I'm super excited to get into this series. Uh, this is actually not my first time doing a Let's Play on No Man's Land, but it has been quite a while since I've done a series like this. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. If you are, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more farming sim content. Uh, this series here, I'm going to initially estimate is going to be anywhere from uh, probably about 20 to 25 episodes. Uh, is where we're going to try to get it to and see where we are at that point. Um, and I'd like to have input from you, the viewer, down in the comments section of some things that you would like to see me try to do here in this role play series. I've picked up on a couple other really cool ideas that some other farming sim content creators have done where their channel subscribers down in the comments section uh, will actually... Um, propose ideas of some things to include into the game uh, such an idea of if you are a subscriber to the channel and you drop a comment down below on this episode saying hey it'd be really cool to see something like such and such production point like maybe you want to see a furniture shop what we can actually do is I will name the production point after the subscriber who made the recommendation down in the comment section. I think that's a great way to keep you, the viewer, involved and also keep you guys engaged in the series as well. So first and foremost with the farm, I want to take a look at what we can do with this field right here. This is going to be a great starter field for us, but I do have some ideas for it. So some of my initial ideas here is to extend this field and make it slightly larger. I don't know if I want to come out any closer to the road over here on this side of the field, but we do have some space to extend the field up closer to our house. And then we also have the option of extending the field out this way about to where you can see the small bushes are starting to uh, spawn in to the map here so if we were to do this we if we extend the field out this way combined with a little bit of the extending the field out this way we would nearly double the size of this field when it does come time to plant the crop which is going to be good for us it's going to increase our yield on whatever we decide to plant which initially if we take a look at what we can plant here coming up we see here that we're looking at wheat barley canola is currently in season we could plant canola if we'd like to now grass fields are always pretty much in play except for in the winter months which makes sense uh, we can harvest the grass in the winter time we just can't plant grass in the winter time but the thing with grass is we have grass all around us that we could mow so if I look at this, we could actually mow all of this grass here and then possibly lease ourselves a baler. Let's take a look and see how much balers are going for lease. So let's double check and make sure we don't have anything in the used sales department here. Um, so now some different balers are going to be more efficient. Like we could lease this Massey Ferguson here, but it does do relatively small bales. We could do this Pottinger here, which does 125 centimeter round bales. Uh, the Coon one here, uh, 125 centimeter to 180 centimeter, not too bad. And then to lease this is actually going to be relatively inexpensive. It's $2,900. But the next thing becomes if we want to make silage bales, which are going to sell for more money, then we also will need a bale wrapper. Now, the Cavernlin here is not bad. However, it would not do 180 centimeter bales we would have to bump up to this baler here in order to do 180 centimeter bales. Let me just double check and make sure that we're, we're looking at this right. So we would probably go, yeah, I'm thinking we could almost even do 125 centimeters initially just to get ourselves started. We'd save a little bit extra money. And if we went with this one and we leased it, we're actually saving ourselves 500 bucks. 125 centimeter bales and then we go over to the bale wrappers and then now this would actually work for wrapping those bales and to lease this is eleven hundred dollars we're looking at three thousand dollars just to get uh stuff baled up and wrapped so that it can begin uh the fermenting process and turn into silage 
The only thing remaining would be mowers, which we can also get a very cheap mower uh, in the form of this one here. And let's go see how much we lease this for. So might as well call it $500, $1,100 for the bale wrapper and $2,500 for the baler itself. So all said and done to mow and bale some grass and get it wrapped, we're looking at about $6,000 to get started, which I don't feel like is really that bad of a price to get everything done. The next thing I would be concerned with, though, is taking a look at the price of silage. So right now, silage, the price is starting to drop a little bit. So it's currently at 286. Now, we're not going to have silage in the month of August, which is good because if we if we mow it, bale it, and wrap it now, the price only starts to go up. We will probably have silage ready to be sold by the time we get to either the month of October or the month of November. So it's going to take us a couple episodes to get there. Um, the unfortunate thing would be, though, we need a way to transport the bales around. So we'd have to kind of keep a lookout for a bale trailer. That's the other thing that I'd really want to try to have is something that we can load bales onto, which we do have some different options. Now, we're not going to cheat our way through the series, but there are going to be some things that we will do that are going to be slightly uh, cheaty if you will. Um, one of the big things is going to be auto loading of bales. You guys do not want to see me use telehandlers or any sort of front loader attachments on our tractor and try to load bales myself. It is going to be a disaster and it's going to take me way too long to accomplish that. So we are going to use auto loading bale trailers and eventually when we get into pallet productions uh, via our production points later in the game, we will also use auto load for pallets as well. This bale trailer would be absolutely perfect though. It's going to hold 28 bales overall to lease it. We're only looking at a thousand dollars. So again, like even to transport the bales, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we can activate auto load. It doesn't cost us anything extra because once we're all done with the mowing, we need to move the bales and store them somewhere. So I think that's what we're going to do first and foremost. I think we are going to start by mowing some of this grass around here, getting it baled up. Uh, we'll harvest this grass here for when we plow the field in. I don't want to let all of this go to waste. And then we will run, run around with the baler, get everything baled up, get it wrapped, and then transport it via the bale trailer. Let's get started. Well, before we get started with mowing, I do see something that we need to fix with our tractor. So we do have the weight fixed on the front of the tractor. So what I would like to do is on the front. Oh, we cannot even do a three point on the front of the tractor. So our mower is going to have to attach to the back of the tractor. That's actually kind of a bummer. All right, we'll take the weight off for right now. Uh, that's going to be something for us to keep in mind, though, is we do not have a three-point attachment in the front of this tractor. Uh, not that it's going to really change anything with the mowing. Um, we'll just attach it to the back. We're still going to be able to get everything mowed up that we need to. Um, I did not lease the baler or the bale wrapper just yet uh, for the sake of being charged extra money. I figured it would be best to wait on that. Um, and then to make sure that I have some room to maneuver around with the baler and the bale wrapper, we are just going to start probably about right here in this area. Matter of fact, let me just go down here and start on a straight line. We'll mow right down the edge of our driveway. And this should not take us very long at all. Let me get to about the edge of this uh, brush line here. Drop that down, kick that on, and let's get going. The nice thing about this mower here is it's not really going to require us to windrow any of this grass up. Uh, but we should just be able to pull the baler right behind us, and it's going to pick up everything that we are leaving behind. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this grass mowed up here. You guys just sit back, relax, and enjoy the time lapse.
finishing up the last little pass here to uh, close out the little bit of mowing that we did. Uh, so basically what we're going to end up doing is everywhere that the grass has been mowed, minus this side right here. Oh, I got to finish up here by the fence too. I totally forgot about that part. Uh, but yeah, everywhere that we have mowed, basically we are going to plow that in and that's going to be the extension of our field uh, to make the most use of the property that we currently have to get us going with a little bit of a starter field. Eventually, once we start to make a little bit more money off of our initial efforts, we'll look at uh, purchasing up other land and starting some other fields as well. Later in the series, what I'd really like to get into as well is to have you, the viewers, subscribers, um, also provide contract requests, uh, such as like delivering a certain amount of crop to uh, the main shop or to like the grain mill, for an example. Um, but that that's going to be a little bit later on in the series. Uh, what I will do is I will keep track in the comment sections with uh, some of the requests that are coming in. Uh, let's make sure that the requests are actually uh, realistic and make sense for the, the let's play slash role play that we're doing for this series here. And then I will start kind of like a, uh, a bit of a running document that has all the requests in there. And it may not be in the next immediate episode, but eventually we will end up getting to the point to where we'll start to fulfill those contract requests from, from viewers uh, with their comments down below on the series. All right, so we are done with the mower. We can go ahead and drop that there. And then just to get that back so we don't uh, get charged for that, we're going to go ahead and return the mower. The next thing that we're going to need to get is going to be the baler. Now, this should not take us very long at all. We're looking at doing, uh, yeah, the pottinger will work. Uh, the nice thing is we do have a vehicle delivery system, so everything we buy or uh, lease from the shop does get delivered down to the farm. I found that to be a very nice feature that the shop offers. We do have to pay a little bit of extra money for it, but it's totally convenient and worth it, in my opinion. So they, uh, they deliver to us right out the front here. Uh, I'm not concerned about driving over the withered potato field because, again, it is just going to get completely plowed up and it's not going to be a factor here for very much longer. Uh, that is going to be the next chore that we're going to be taking care of here in the month of August before we move into September. So we'll go ahead. We'll drop that down. Let's turn automatic drop on. And away we go. We will start to bail all this up. And uh, this baler here, once it does fill up, we do have to stop, let the bale come out the backside before we can continue on. Otherwise, we'll start to miss uh, smaller bits of grass as we begin baling. But I believe this is going to give us a 3,500 liter bale, which is going to be pretty good for us here in the, in the early start of everything. Yeah, just shy of 3,500 liters. Uh, so what I'm going to do is so that this bale that is about to drop is not in the way of anything. I'm just going to start by moving up this way. We'll drop that one right there. That is perfect. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and collect up the rest of this. The wrapping's not going to take too long. The baling itself is not going to take too long. Um, episodes... The way I'm going to try to break down the majority of the episodes is probably trying to keep it to about a month per episode. Now, what is going to change that is when we get into the winter time, and there's not going to be much for us to do, especially in the early parts of the roleplay series here on No Man's Land. Eventually, though, we are going to be looking at getting some animals for the farm, so we will have to ensure that through the winter time, even though we may not have very much field work to be doing, we will have livestock that we're going to have to keep an eye on, such as sheep, chicken, cows. So we're going to have to make sure that they are remaining fed and then also collect up anything that they produce for us, such as milk, slurry, um, wool that we can take to some of the production points later in the game as well. So... Yeah, through the winter time, we may advance many episodes, and if we don't have too much going on or nothing that's super significant, uh, 
we'll probably just skip all the way through the winter time and then I'll update everyone in the spring as to anything that happened through the winter time, which typically is not going to be too much. And I feel like it kind of just really keeps the series going a little bit, uh, especially in the early game. All right, we have finished up with our bailing adventure here. So we got uh, three bales there. Uh, let's see, we got, looks like three more here. So that's six. And then I think we also have three down here at this end. So we ended up pulling nine total bales. So that's not bad for the little area that we harvested. Each bale is going to be uh, 3,500 liters. So let's see we have two bales would make 7,000 liters total so there's another two bales that'd be 14,000 liters oh wait is that another bale right there it sure is so two bales 7,000 another two bales that's another 7,000 that's 14,000 plus another 7,000 is 21,000 and then we should have Two more bales down here, 28,000. So 31,500 liters of silage. And then just to kind of show where we're going to be money-wise, um, when we do sell, like right now, if we were to sell our silage, we're getting $286 per 1,000 liters. We have, uh, I already forgot the number. I think we said, oh, good Lord, 31,500 liters. So basically it would be $286 times, uh, let's just call it 32 uh, for easy math. And that right now, if we were to sell, would give us uh, just under $10,000. Matter of fact, just over 9,000. We'd get $9,152 for uh, cashing in on all of these bales currently right now, if we were to have these already wrapped and them already be silage so that's not bad ten thousand dollars and we spent uh not even uh we're gonna spend right about five grand in equipment so we're actually going to we're gonna net pretty close to five thousand dollars by the time this whole entire project is all said and done it's not a bad way to start and now what we've done is we've opened up this area we've you know made use of the grass that we have here the field grass and so now when we plow this field all of this field grass just won't be going to waste we have to keep in mind too that we also have uh land on the back side of this wood line here that we own as well that maybe once we make a little bit extra of money we could actually come back here and mow this area out my initial thoughts are we may end up coming in here and doing some tree work in cutting down a lot of these trees that are basically from the back side of this fence on out i don't want to take down anything that's on like this side of the fence over here uh, for the aesthetic value again i want to have some trees around our farm and around our house but again this this isn't going to be our house forever you know we bought this knowing that it was going to be a little bit of a fixer upper project so that's i mean we gotta we gotta think about that you know at some point we are going to expand the farm a little bit we're going to get rid of our outhouse here uh because this is not fun i don't enjoy this uh that's just yeah it's bad as you can see let's just go ahead and shut that we don't need to see that anymore we'll get rid of this old uh rickety fence that we have here again we'll probably take a look at maybe rebuilding our house we're going to need a better shed uh storage options for all of our equipment that we're spending or going to end up spending a lot of money on and then this area back here, what a gem. This is eventually going to get converted into a field. We'll make, uh, we'll make, we'll kind of make it work with this rock formation that we have here. But again, all this field grass is able to be mowed, baled, wrapped, converted to silage. So that is probably going to be one of the next tasks that we look at doing once we do a little bit of work with that potato field and decide what we're going to get planted in there i'm thinking for the month of september one of the priority tasks that we're going to have is getting all this area mowed up back here we'll get everything bailed and matter of fact what we'll probably end up doing is maybe we'll just uh we'll get all of this mowed and all of it bailed up back here and then we'll just wrap all the bales at the same time. That way they all ferment into silage at the same time. We're safe on the pricing for silage right now because the price is only going up. 
So if we harvest the grass next month in September, for an example, uh, and we get silage by November, we're probably going to start knocking on the the $300 range right there, which is going to bring our price up quite a bit. We're going to easily start looking at making maybe more around $13,000 once we turn all the bales in. And that's just based off what we currently have. That's not even taking into consideration the bales that we're going to pull off that field out there in the back. I do think that is going to be our game plan. But for now, that is going to be a wrap on the first episode of the roleplay series here on No Man's Land. We're starting to get uh, busy here around the farm, starting to come up with some uh, things to add to our to-do list. We got a lot of work still ahead of us. Um, we also got to keep in mind, we got to keep the money flowing in because we are going to start having to pay our loan off starting in the month of September. It's going to be right away. It's a five-year loan, no. So hopefully um, we can have it paid off a little bit early. I think, I think we're going to be able to manage that. I think so. But I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. I apologize if this one's just a little bit shorter. Uh, not all the episodes are going to be this short, but for us just getting started with the series here and getting an introduction to everything, uh, I feel like this is going to be appropriate. Uh, hope to see you guys in the next episode. If you enjoyed this one again, please consider liking the video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know some things you'd like to see as we progress throughout the series. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell so you don't miss any future content here from Misled Farms. And with that, we'll see you all in the next one.